Because refraction is something that happens in our natural world, it's something that should behave the same across any software you use for rendering. Now, there are two major approaches you can take for setting up transparent materials and managing refraction correctly, and I'm going to cover both in today's video. Now, here we have a textured plane and a slab of glass that is not transparent yet. It's not glass yet, but it will be. And I'm going to run through a few examples to show you how to understand this a little better in your own scenes. If you want to download this practice scene, you can get it from my website within the file vault. Okay, so if I double click on this piece of glass and change it from diffuse material to a glass material, you'll notice that while it becomes transparent, it lacks a few traits that we would normally associate with glass. This looks very artificial and it seems to lack some depth. Well, what does that mean? Lacking depth typically means it's missing some of those refractions that we are dependent on to understand that this is a glass-like material. In this shader, or this material type, this is a basic glass. It is not refractive by default. When I click this checkbox for refraction, it starts to look a little bit more realistic or a little bit more familiar, the way we would expect it to look. However, before we go any further, I want to address two things. First of all, our lighting environment. Even though we've turned this into a glass material type, the lighting environment is gonna have a huge impact on how it looks. Right now, we've got a pretty flat looking environment. I'm going to put one with more contrast on. So I'll use this three panel straight 4K. Now we're gonna add some more highlights, some more dark areas. I'm also gonna to go to the lighting tab. We are in basic mode, which has very few ray bounces, does not have global illumination enabled. I'm going to go into product mode, which by default turns those on. And now we're looking at a glass material that looks a lot more realistic. If you haven't already done so, I highly recommend downloading my free Keyshot rendering roadmap. It's a document full of shortcuts, tips, and tricks that I use to push my renderings just a little bit further each time. Visit willgibbons.com roadmap to get yours for free today. So why does refraction make this look realistic and what is actually refraction? So if I change my view to something sort of like this, it's kind of a weird view, but we can kind of see what's going on. So glass is reflective. When light hits glass, some of it is going to bounce off. So we can see the ground plane, which is this gray surface, is being reflected in the front face or surface of this glass slab. We also see on the edge some of it being reflected here. And then we also, from kind of a glancing angle, can see through the glass and we see the stripes. Those stripes are on the card that's set up behind here, but those stripes are also not quite aligned with the other stripes. That's all because of refraction. So when light comes and hits this surface, some of it bounces off, some of it moves all the way through it. And we know that because this is a transparent material, because we can see through it, that tells us that light is moving through it. Light slows down as it moves through any material other than air. How much it slows down depends on how dense that material is. And we use this measurement called refractive index or index of refraction to describe how much light slows down as it moves through the material. So in this case, you'll notice the stripes are offset. That has a lot to do with this number, the refractive index. If I set this to just one, you'll notice this glass object basically disappears. That's because the light is moving through it the same way it moves through air. Now, if we set this value to 1.1, you'll notice that the stripes are hardly offset at all. They're almost lined up. Those lines that we see are pretty much lined up with one another. Maybe this is a better angle to show that off. Now, if I increase this to 1.2, it gets a little bit more reflective or shiny looking, and those lines or stripes kind of offset a little further. If I go up to 1.5, you'll notice that that offset is a little bit greater. And if I increase this all the way up to two, you'll notice it offsets further. And as I increase this value, because the light is moving through this block of glass quite a bit slower, in this case, three times slower than it moves through air, it is offsetting, or it seems to offset anything we see behind it or through it. And that's because the light is moving faster outside the object than it is moving inside the object. And because it, we're experiencing this in real time, this offset and speed produces a visual offset of the object behind it. So how does this affect our renderings? Generally speaking, we wanna use a realistic index of refraction. If we hover over this, 
Keyshot gives us a few baselines, but the refractive index of any material on Earth can be measured, and you can typically look it up and pop that value in here to get a better or more realistic result. As we increase this value, you'll notice in Keyshot, a couple things will happen. The surface, the outer surface of the material will get a little more reflective, and you're going to notice that it's going to look a little bit harder. Well, what if I go all the way up to 10 with this? Now, despite seeing through it, it almost appears to be like a mirror, like a piece of metal. That's es essentially what's happening. So you can create the appearance of hardness, essentially, as well as, you know, more distortion within the actual material by increasing the refractive index. For example, a diamond is somewhere in the range of 2.5. It's an incredibly hard material. Now, if you want this to look more realistic, like glass, anywhere between 1.5 and 1.6 is going to be a more realistic value. All right, so the example here with this piece of glass is really basic and simple. Let's take a look at some more complex or realistic form factors. Now, I'll hide this and turn on a pint glass. Before I continue, I wanna mention that depending on the 3D data you're working with, there are gonna be two different approaches that you need to consider here. Both will work, but depending on the 3D model you're using, your approach within your render engine is gonna to have to be wildly different. We're gonna start with the more simple approach that's called nested dielectric, and we're going to do that with this example because this is a glass that was modeled as solid bodies. If I turn off the pint glass, we see a solid liquid body with no openings, no split surfaces. And then we also see a pint glass that was modeled the same way. It's an enclosed solid surface. One important thing to note, if I turn on that liquid and use a cutaway material, I know it's a little hard to see, but hopefully you can notice that the liquid body actually protrudes or overlaps it sticks into the wall of this glass. And I made sure when I modeled this all the way around that it's overlapping. That means there's no air between the liquid solid and the glass solid. This is very important, at least to key shot when using what's called the nested dielectric approach. I'll double click the pint glass and change its material from a diffuse to a solid glass. Solid glass is a pretty basic shader in Keyshot. We don't need to worry about roughness. We don't need to worry about the color or transparency distance right now. We're just gonna look at this refractive index value. It defaults to a 1.5, which is a pretty realistic value for most glass. Sure, we could you know, add a little bit plus or minus to really dial it into exactly what we want, but generally speaking, the appearance is gonna look the same across all glass materials here. One thing you might notice is that that blue solid liquid body looks like it's actually reaching to the very edge of the glass. If you were to go to your kitchen, grab a glass and fill it up with something that's either colored or not fully transparent, like milk maybe, you would see the same phenomena. It looks like that liquid goes all the way to the very edge of the glass, and that's happening due to refraction. Now, if we go ahead and double click on the liquid material here, it's still a diffuse material, so let's change it to something called liquid. Now, right now, it's not working correctly. It doesn't quite look right, and that's because the refractive index of that liquid is 1.5 and the refractive index of that glass is also 1.5. What that means is when the glass and the liquid do not have a different refractive index value, Keyshot's not quite sure how to treat it, and it might just treat it like one solid piece of glass. So to fix that, we need to change this value of the liquid to something a little bit more realistic. Now, water has a refractive index of 1.333. So if I hit that and enter, it goes really dark. That's just because it's got a really dark color here. So let's make it basically white. And we are basically seeing what we should. We see the refraction that's happening because of the glass and the water. And if we want, we can add just a little bit of color to make that a little easier to see. And then for the glass, it could be made brighter. There we go. 
we are now getting the results that are both desired and expected. So that's a very, very easy approach to creating nested dielectrics. What if we're not given solids, but we're working with surfaces? I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on our other model. To make this a little easier, I'm going to turn on this other pint glass and I'm going to move it off to the side so we can see both of them together at the same time. Okay, so how do we treat this model, which is set up very differently than our solid? I can start by double clicking on this outer surface and we need to change it to a different material. And while I could try to go with solid glass, it's not actually going to work the way we want it to. That's because it's not an enclosed surface. If I were to hide the other surfaces, it breaks. In order to get the solid glass shader to work properly, it should be an enclosed surface. So instead, what we're going to do is change this to a dielectric, and that's going to give us the control we need over this material. The way this is going to work is based on what's called boundary surfaces or interfaces. And we're going to be setting values and numbers to describe what's happening with the index of refraction to each of these surfaces. So for example, this surface is where we have air all around the glass and we have the glass material on the inside. So what we wanna do, if we want an index of refraction of 1.5 for the glass, that's already set. But what we're not accommodating for is the index of refraction on the outside of the surface. And that is going to, in this case, be air. So we'll leave that set to one. So by default, this is set up correctly. But if we go and turn on the next surface, I'll turn this one off, and I'll turn on our glass liquid surface, we need to change this to a dielectric, just like we did with the other one. And in this case, this is the boundary surface between the liquid on the inside of the glass and the glass material. So on the inside, we know that from our previous example, our liquid has a refractive index of 1.333. We'll go and make the inside here 1.333 to match. If we wanna use the same color up here, we can grab that from our liquid here. Let's just save this over here and we'll use that same color here. There we go. Now on the outside, the refractive index outside, we want this to match the material type that this is going to be touching, which is the glass. And since we had an index of refraction 1.5, we'll type that in. And now we should start to see some more realistic looking refractions here. The last one that we have is the liquid air interface. Now, if I turn on the glass liquid and the glass air, we'll see that these two should look the same from the outside. However, looking into the water, we're not getting the result we want. We have one more interface to deal with, and that's the liquid air interface. So the down or the bottom side of the surface is touching the liquid. The top is touching the air. So let's go in here and set our materials. We wanna change it from diffuse to dielectric. We will go ahead and use that same transmission color that we were using for the liquid before. Our refractive index is going to be our water value because that's the downward facing surface. I'll type in 1.333. And our refractive index outside is one that is indeed facing the air. What we should notice is that these two should look identical. Okay, now I'm gonna move this card on over so it's effectively right behind both pint glasses. And of course, our environment is going to have an effect on the glasses if it's not perfectly matching. The other thing I'm noticing is this glass on the right looks a little darker at the bottom. That's probably due to this transmission value. I don't know what we set for this other glass. Let's go ahead and take that value and we'll use it on this other one. And now we should be seeing identical results using two entirely different approaches for setting up transparent materials, dielectrics, whatever you wanna call it. Basically, we reproduce the same end result using two wildly different approaches. Now, these are two pretty simple examples. What would happen if we had a plastic straw sticking through here, some ice cubes or anything like that? This is going to be a little bit different, probably depending on the render engine you're using. Some render engines handle nested dielectrics or layered transparent materials better than others, and your approach may vary. I do suspect the approach we took on the right with the surfaces 
is going to give you a little bit more control instead of relying on the intelligence of the software. So if you need to have multiple objects penetrating the water or the glass, whatever, you may find that using the approach on the right is the better option. However, it's worth testing out the basic nested dielectric solid approach if you're already using a solid modeler because if it ends up working and looking correct, it essentially saves you quite a bit of work.